So before we get into the wrap up, I just need to say something. I can't carry on as normal on this channel when black Americans are dying at the hands of American law enforcement. I know I don't have that big of a platform, but with the small platform I do have, and with the people who watch my videos, who I'm very grateful for, I would just like to encourage you during this time to sign petitions, donate. If you can, support the people who are hurting right now, listen to them, and learn. I will be linking several petitions and different places you can donate to. I will be donating to some of these links and I encourage you to donate as well if you can. And if you can't, there's other ways to support that do not involve donation. And like I said, I will have petitions down below for you to engage with as well. My Twitter also has some resources that I've been retweeting and so if you would like to check that out to find more resources, ways you can support as an ally. My link for my Twitter is also in the description. So starting with the wrap up, hi my name is Selena and these are the books that I read in May. Before we start talking about the actual books that I read in May, I wanted to talk about some stats with you really quickly about what I was reading, how I liked it, etc. So I read nine books and two short stories. The breakdown of those of those nine books though, eight of those books were novels and one was a short story collection. I did read all of the short stories in that collection and so that brings my total of short stories this month to 14, which is not very much like me because I don't tend to love most short stories. It's not my favorite way to consume stories. This month was kind of a bad reading month for me. The majority of the books I read I either hated or I just, they were like middle of the road three star books, which they're still solid, they're still good books, but I either had pretty mixed feelings about them or they just weren't something that I loved really. But that being said, my ratings this month were, I had two one star books, zero two stars, five three stars or 3.5 and two four stars and two five stars. For age ranges I read five YA stories, four adult stories, and two children's stories. And by children's stories I mean these books when they were written were targeted at children and so the primary audience for these books was children. As for genres I was kind of all over the place. I still read five fantasy stories but I also had one horror, one literary fiction, one dystopian, and one sci-fi. And then I also read two classics of the month and the genres for the classics, one of them was a comedy of manners and one was a fairy tale collection. I also should just say I had three DNFs this month and so that also added to the I wasn't happy with what I was reading this month, but I'm not going to talk about that here because they're DNFs and I will probably do a separate video about my DNFs at some point. And I also am currently reading Miss Born Secret History by Brandon Sanderson. It's a novella. I didn't finish it by June 1st. It is currently June 1st and so I'll finish it in June. So my first one star because this book made me... No, it didn't actually make me the most angry this month. That was the DNF. But this was the book that made me the, the second most angry this month. And it's my least favorite book that I completed this month. And that book is sadly Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Little Fires Everywhere follows two families living in a suburb. One is the family of the Richardsons who are a very straight-laced and are very, they, they conform. They conform a lot into society. And then you follow their tenants. The Richardsons rent their, their second house or something out to, to tenants. And some of their tenants, their new tenants are Mia and her daughter Pearl. And Mia is not very conformist and kind of shakes up the suburbs a little bit. And we also have a subplot going on in the background a little bit, which this suburb kind of becomes embroiled in when a family in living in the suburbs attempts to adopt a Chinese American baby and the birth mother of this child tries to get custody back. And so we follow this custody battle and how it kind of tears the Ohio suburbs of Shaker Heights apart. So I have a very detailed review on my Goodreads about why I didn't like this book and I will link that in the description below. I'm not gonna get into details here because of spoilers, but mainly what I can say is, first of all, literary fiction doesn't tend to connect with me 
just as a genre really. There have been a couple that I've connected with and Frederick Bachman, who people sometimes consider literary fiction, is one of my favorite authors and he writes literary fiction that I do connect with. But what I've noticed is that the kind of literary fiction I connect with does not have the traits that Little Fires Everywhere has. To me, Little Fires Everywhere had kind of a boring plot, even as Ng's writing is very readable. The plot she presents is pretty boring and it's it's kind of carried by these shocking reveals that I just couldn't suspend my disbelief enough to care about. To me, the character development was not great. There were really big key actions that I should have understood by the end of the book, and that was kind of the promise of this book, and I didn't understand them. Uh, the characters' motivations didn't really make sense to me, and I think that comes from the characters not being drawn with the amount of depth that they needed to make them make sense. Along with that, it seemed like to me that this book chose for its readers who the good characters were and who the bad characters were based off of one character in particular and the flawed actions of the good characters were kind of ignored and the flawed actions of the bad characters were kind of amplified and I honestly prefer for my books to not kind of feed that to me. I would prefer you to just present me a character and allow me to figure out whether I like them and whether I think their actions were justified or whatever and so that didn't really pair well with me not knowing their motivations. It really felt like in order to to make up for the fact that the motivations of these people were not being discussed the book would just tell you who was right. And I would have preferred like a more nuanced way that that could have been handled. But all of that only made this book disappointing and more of a two star read. There was one particular theme that ran under every other theme in this book and kind of undercut its really important parts, I believe. And this ongoing theme was that biological mothers trump all other kinds of motherhood and that biological motherhood is the most perfect form of motherhood as long as the mother can nurture that kind of ready-made bond. The adoptive mothers in this book I felt were seen as lesser forms of motherhood and that's just a theme that I didn't like at all <laughs> as someone who wants to adopt and is very interested in the the kind of themes that this book wanted to discuss and the topics that this wanted to, to discuss. This book was very focused on interracial adoption and the conversation around that. I didn't appreciate that this book was tinged with a favoring of biological connections and DNA. And that is really what made this book one star. I did not enjoy that at all. I thought that it did a lot of harm to this book actually and that is why I personally just hated it. I mean, what do you do? Talking about my other one star book of the month, this is a book that I actually reviewed on YouTube so I will link my video review in the description as well and that book is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is a Hunger Games prequel. It follows Coriolana Snow who is the president of the Society of the Hunger Games in the original trilogy. He's one of the villains and this is kind of his villain origin story. It's him as a teenager serving as a mentor to a tribute in District 12. I gave this book one star not necessarily because it made me as angry as Little Fires Everywhere did, even though this book definitely had gross problematic elements in my opinion, but because I just didn't enjoy reading any part of this book. I thought it was boring. I thought it was not really adding anything new to the Hunger Games world. It didn't give me any context that I thought I desperately needed and I was just very disappointed by this book and didn't enjoy my reading experience of it at all and so that's why I gave it one star. I understand what Suzanne Collins was trying to do in this book but I thought it was just executed really poorly and if you would like to hear more about that I will link my review down below. Also if you're looking for another person's review who I just think all of the thoughts were spot on and way better than how I put them. Um, Mina Reads has a review and I will link that down below because I was watching that earlier and I was just like, yeah, 
yeah, that's what this book, yeah, exactly. It is a spoilery review. My review is spoiler and non-spoiler. So if you don't want to be spoiled, maybe don't watch either of those reviews yet. Next, we were into my three stars. I had two three stars this month that were not 3.5 stars. And both of the three stars were short stories out of Arcanum Unbounded by Brandon Sanderson. This is a short story and novella collection that Brandon Sanderson has published. All of these stories take place within his Cosmere universe, which is kind of a universe of many different planets. All of his adult fantasy novels take place on different planets in this universe, and they all have different magics. This collection includes many different short stories and novellas from the planets we've already seen and some planets that we have yet to see in any full-size novels and I have only read two of the short stories so far. One was The Eleventh Metal which goes with the Mistborn trilogy. It is a prequel to the Mistborn trilogy and then I also read The Hope of Elantris which is an Elantris story that focuses on a part of Elantris's ending that we were not privy to in the actual novel. They were three stars. They were good. They were solid, but they weren't anything special to me. Moving on to my first 3.5 star book of the month, and that is Mantle Park by Jane Austen. I talked about this book extensively in my May classics wrap up, so I will link that down below so you can check that out if you want more extended thoughts on Mansfield Park. But all I'll say is it's not my favorite Jane Austen book. It takes a lot of traits of Jane Austen novels, and I think it doesn't execute them as well as other Jane Austen novels, but it is still a Jane Austen novel. So I do think that a 3.5 star for Jane Austen is like miles ahead of most 3.5 stars, but I did have mixed opinions on it. So you can check that out in the classics wrap up if you would like. Moving on to my next 3.5 star, and that is The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis. This is a prequel to the Chronicles of Narnia. It follows the creation of Narnia and its entrance. I loved The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe when I read it in December, or reread it in December. I had never read this book before. I tried it as a kid, but I didn't, I was kind of bored by it, so I didn't ever finish it. This book was a lot funnier at times than The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It was just as whimsical as The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, but it also, just like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, had this kind of solemn, quiet side to it. And that's kind of the Christian fantasy coming out, I think. And I really enjoyed that balance in the Narnia books. I think gives a beautiful balance that C.S. Lewis executes perfectly. This book also seemed to talk to a lot of books that I really love, like Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Jane Eyre, etc, etc. The Little Prince, ooh, The Little Prince, with its humor and with its references. And I, I just, I really enjoyed that aspect of it as well. This book also has one of the most interesting interpretations of the Apple sequence of Genesis that I have ever seen. I really loved this interpretation of the Apple sequence. In the end though, I'm giving it 3.5 stars because I wasn't as invested in the characters or the plot as I was in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. This plot was kind of, it kind of changed a lot in my opinion and the characters were not as compelling as the Pivenses and the people they run into in Narnia. In the end, I am very glad I read it though. I do think it added a lot to the Narnia lore and it was really interesting to see the birth of Narnia. And then my final 3.5 star book of the month was A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the second book to A Curse of Dark and Lonely. The Curse of Dark and Lonely is a Beauty and the Beast retelling following a girl named Harper who is taken into another realm in order to help the a prince of this realm take the curse off of himself and his kingdom. Pretty standard. Beauty and the Beast retelling, but I loved it. I gave it five stars. This I gave 3.5 stars because I had mixed opinions. It's a kind of a similar situation with The Magician's Nephew. Bridget Kemmer loves to do this thing where she follows different people in her series and so they feel a lot more like companions and this was the case in this one. We did not follow Harper and Wren from the first book. Our perspectives were different people and usually that works for me when Bridget Kemmer does it, but I just wasn't as invested in the main characters of this book as I was in A Curse of Dark and Lonely. They weren't bad, but I just wasn't as emotionally attached to them and I wasn't as invested in seeing where they ended up. Also, we just had a severe lack of Harper in this book that I just... <sighs> It had me missing her because I love Harper. She's one of my favorite main characters and I just wish that we had more of her in this book, but it was still a solid book. 
I'm still gonna continue on with the series. I just preferred A Curse of Dark and Lonely. Moving on to my four star books, and I also had mixed opinions about these, so I don't really know which one I liked more, but the first one that I'm gonna talk about is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This is a book about a runaway princess who leaves her kingdom on her wedding day because she does not want to be married to the man she was arranged to marry because she doesn't know him and she just doesn't want to have an arranged marriage and so she abandons her duties and goes and takes refuge in a city where she becomes a waitress and the jilted prince goes after her to figure out why she did that and an assassin from a neighboring kingdom also goes after her to dispose of her. This book is YA fantasy. It's kind of an older, more typical YA. I, I enjoyed this book overall. There were things that I didn't love, like the romance I thought was kind of cringy. And I do definitely think this book had kind of a slow start and a slow beginning. It was a little bit anticlimactic, but the middle was really interesting. I loved the setting. I loved Leah, our main character. I think she's flawed, but also really interesting to follow and so I, I really liked her. For a while I thought this book might be five stars but I settled on four stars eventually because the love triangle got to be really gross in a way. This one I was just like hmm one of you is a slime ball and I don't like it. And then I also think that the pacing issues really hurt this book and so I did end up taking a star off but I did really enjoy it. And then my final four star book of the month was Surprising No One More Than Me, Mr. Monster by Dan Wells. This is the second book in the John Cleaver series which is a series about a boy named John Cleaver who gets urges to brutally murder people. It's a series about a boy who is struggling with his urges to be very violent and who restrains himself with a very strict moral code and very strict rules about what he can and can't do in order to keep his urges from becoming a reality. And the first book basically follows a string of murders that happens in John Cleaver's town and so John takes it upon himself to investigate them. I would call the first one like a paranormal light YA horror book. This one is just plain YA horror and I actually I was very disappointed in the first book because I thought it was kind of cheesy and kind of it didn't pack that much of a punch and I think the plot just really killed any punch that book could have had. This book though was impressive. Let me tell you I was not expecting Dan Wells to pull up with this and I honestly feel like the biggest problems with this book are the fact that it is the, it is the second in a series and it needs the first book to happen in order for you to get to this book. Because if this book were the story on its own, it would be fantastic. And because it's not, I think it really, the series as a whole is kind of dragged down. But I did give this four stars eventually because I could not stop thinking about it. This book feels kind of like a YA mixture of It by Stephen King and The Silence of the Lambs movie. But this book really reminded me of both those books. I think it definitely deals with similar themes and at times has similar plot structures and devices that it uses. The buildup is still weaker than I would have liked and this was also my problem with the last book but I do think that it really paid off in the end and there were still some good moments. The climax or the last 100 pages when the action really started and the climax were just phenomenal. I thought it was done so incredibly well. I thought this book was going to be like a three-star book and then that part of the book was a five-star book for me. And so I settled on four stars because I can't really get rid of the stuff around it, but that climax was amazing. I do think it ended a bit abruptly and I do have problems with some of the male gazes going on of certain characters in this book. I also, John Cleaver is a character that I intermittently love and hate because I think he's very interesting, but he's also not a very likable person to be around. And especially in this book, he deals with a lot of thoughts that I thought were kind of gross, but like that's the point, it's horror, like that's kind of the point. And I'm not on John Cleaver's side all the time, but I also think that that's part of the beauty with John Cleaver. I honestly think that this book is actually pretty dark this book, not the first in the series, is actually pretty dark for a YA horror and there was, it was because there was this human element to the horror that I think It by Stephen King has and I think The Silence of the Lambs has that this also had that makes this book 
so creepy and actually scary and I just thought it was really well done. Now we're getting into my five star books of the month and these I have already talked about in other videos which I will also link but the first one of those is The Little Mermaid and Other Fairy Tales by Hans Christian Andersen. This is a collection of 12 fairy tales by Hans Christian Andersen with interactive elements. This is the Mina Lima interactive elements edition. This book I really really enjoyed reading. I, I thought that the illustrations were amazing and I thought that the selection of stories in this was also amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed this collection and I have a newfound respect for Hans Christian Andersen and a newfound like love for him as a fairy tale author. I might like him better than the Grimm's brothers, the Grimm brothers. I don't know but I'm not gonna go into it too deeply. I went into basically all my favorites in the classics wrap up I did and I also feature videos of this beautiful art. I also will just mention there was one story I forgot to mention in that video which I really loved called The Little Match Girl. It was beautiful and tragic and I loved it. Then the final book that I'm talking about in this wrap-up, my favorite book of the month was Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is about a girl named Spencer who wants to be a pilot and her society is constantly attacked by alien invaders and so her society has basically developed this military government and very important military structure and Spenza wants to be a pilot. She wants to help defend her planet and her father was also a pilot and she highly looked up to him. One day though her father flees during a battle and his own crew shoots him down because of his cowardice and Spencer reaps the consequences of his cowardice and due to the society that she lives in cowardice is highly frowned upon and it it really affects your life if you're labeled as a coward and Spencer's life is definitely affected and so this is her fight to get into piloting when she's at a major disadvantage because of her father's reputation. I love this book. I loved Spensa. I really connected with Spensa and connected with the story in a very personal way. I think that this is a great example of a YA book that deals with sci-fi elements and also like a teen sort of coming of age themes. It's the first non-Cosmere book of Brandon Sanderson that I've ever read and I thought it was just as good as his usual stuff that I read. I loved this book so much. It meant so much to me. I highly recommend you pick it up. I'm not even the hugest sci-fi fan. Like I like sci-fi but it's not fantasy for me and this book made me basically rethink that whole thing because wow did I love this book so so much. Oh I also have a full review for this so you should check that out if you want more spoiler free thoughts about the this book and you can decide whether it's the book for you. I also have a spoiler section if you are interested in more spoilery thoughts. I'm Selena and these are some of the books that I read in the month of May. Tell me in the comments whether you liked any of these books and what your favorite book you read in May was and I will see you next time. Bye. Also don't forget to check the description for all the petitions and things.